You're listening to the Wax Pack Hero Sports Card Minute, a podcast where we discuss both the hobby and business sides of collecting. I'm your host, Mike Summer, and I want to help you buy, sell, and trade your way into a collection you'll love. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Wax Pack Hero Sports Card Minute. Last week, I spent an episode discussing some of the thought process that I used as I started um, the the website, and I kind of talked about what my goals were for the site and some of the strategies that I had been using over the last two years to try and grow the site. And so today I thought I would kind of do a second follow-on episode and talk a little bit about the, the content and some of the more popular content that I've had over that time. And so I wanted to dig in and we'll kind of look at what articles have been the most popular topics, uh, what subjects seem to draw the most attention from Google search results and some of the feedback that I've gotten for those. And that's kind of what I want to cover today. We're going to go, we're going to dig into some of the, the most popular content on Wax Pack Hero. But first, I want to remind you to check out Underdog Events and Collectibles at udogcollect.com. They're a shop that is by collectors and for collectors. And they're going to be hosting multiple breaks this week with some of the the biggest baseball and basketball releases that they can get their hands on. And they're also offering one of the cheapest prices online for 2019 Tops Hobby Update. And actually, for listeners of this podcast, you can use the discount code WAXPACK to receive 5% off. And that code should be good through May 3rd. As you know, Update was loaded with some great rookies. And so if you want to get in on that break at a discounted price, go to udogcollect.com and and find that Tops Update break. Use the the coupon code WAXPACK to receive an additional 5% off. Remember, always bet on the underdog. All right, now let's take a look at some of the most popular content at waxpackhero.com. And all I did was I pulled up the analytics site within Squarespace to see what the most traffic generating articles are and what the most traffic generating pages are on the site. And I thought I would just kind of go down that list and highlight some of those and talk about if it's a prize me or not and, and maybe what my current understanding is on why that might be so popular and We'll see what we can learn from that. We'll see if that is helpful for you. If you're a content creator, maybe it will give you ideas on something similar that might work well for your site. The first one, far and away, that generates the most traffic to Wax Pack Hero is how to mail a baseball card in a PWE, the definitive guide. Plain white envelopes are what everybody wants to read about. And far and away, month after month, that article continues to get the most traffic to the site. I wrote that article as one of the first ones. It was like January or February of 2018 within the first month or two of of setting up the site. And it still, month after month, brings in the most traffic. In fact, it brings in more traffic than the landing page of waxpackhero.com. It is just a super popular article. And then the next most popular actual article is the Definitive Guide to Shipping Sports Cards via USPS. Two articles that are kind of foundational reference material are the two most popular articles uh, month after month. And I think that that kind of proves the point of one of the things I was going for is to provide a resource that people could come back to that they find helpful and informative. And hopefully the fact that these two are so popular uh, means that that those landed and those connected with people and that reference material is is the two most popular articles on the site. Now the next one is my review of ComC and that is also one of the the most popular places to go. I think the Google search results it's number one if you search for Google or if you search for ComC review. That generates a lot of interest. My review of Sport Lots also generates quite a bit of interest. People, again, looking for alternatives to eBay, they want to find and learn more about other sites that are out there and other sources for cards, and I think that's part of why those ComC and Sportlot articles are also some of the most popular popular articles. Now, the, the next one is, is a simple guide to creating an eBay variation listing. So once again, something that is reference material that is very helpful for people if you learn how to do it and learn how to create a variation listing. 
but not everybody just knows it intuitively. And so that's another one that is pretty popular, followed by the is Gary Vaynerchuk good for the sports card community? And Gary was such a big topic of conversation last year that I wanted to kind of summarize what my thoughts were on that. One, I thought the information inside would be helpful, and I had a lot of fun writing about it and getting my thoughts on on paper or uh, digital paper, I guess, as the case may be. But I also kind of knew that maybe I can capitalize a little bit on that Gary V bump and get some people to um, check it out who maybe otherwise wouldn't have. And the Gary V article is, an, is one of the more popular articles. It's probably inflated a little bit because I have that as my pinned post or my pinned tweet on Twitter. And so that, I think, helps continue to keep some of that traffic coming. But it's also, you know, something that, that I got a lot of feedback on and people shared a lot. And there was there was something there that people resonated with that message, both Gary Vee's in- interest in the hobby as well as some of those key takeaways that I, I wrote about in that article. The next couple are more reference material. So the best sports card blogs post that I've got, that's been something that has been gaining more and more traffic, as well as the the post I wrote about the nine best sports card podcasts in 2020. Both reference material, both people who are looking to engage with sports card media and sports card content and they are things that people continue to go to and continue to share. And, you know, that's been neat to see because, again, it's, it's going back to the purpose that I started the site. These are all things that when I was new to the hobby, I was trying to learn about and I was trying to understand that helped ease that transition back into collecting and ease that transition into buying and selling. Now, the next group of, of popular pages kind of blows me away. And to be honest, I got this idea from some of the early sports card radio content as they were talking about some things that had generated traffic to their site early on. I am not a Google expert, and I have no idea how or why this happens, but the next set of most popular pages are simply listings of NFL NBA, NHL, and MLB team addresses. Addresses to the stadiums that people can write in um, and send autograph requests and things to. Waxpack Hero is the first search result in Google for anybody who searches NFL team addresses, NBA team addresses, NHL team addresses, and it's the second or third result for MLB team addresses. I don't know what I did to to generate that such you know that high search ranking i don't know that there's anything intentional intentional or special that i did that lets those reference pages be ranked so highly in google but they are and they generate a lot of traffic and they continue to bring people into to wax back hero i think that's awesome i'm happy about that it was simply looking them all up and typing them into the the web page and making the web page as a standalone page it was not a hard thing to do but it is something that's been effective at driving traffic to the site and next is another idea that I stole directly from Ryan at Sports Card Radio. He put this out in a Facebook uh, post about ideas for potential content. And so I picked it up and took him up on that idea. And he, he challenged people to go ahead and do it and see what happens. And I did it. And it is the guide to first Bowman cards that I put out. And so I went through and compiled uh, a listing and a searchable listing of all of the cards with a first Bowman logo on them for all years of Bowman. And that has been like the 10th most popular article in the last month. I think there's over 200 people that went and utilized that resource in the last month. That's been neat to see that that's just one more place that people are are coming and checking it out and finding value. I've had some people reach out and say, thanks for doing this. It's made it easy to find out which cards have that first Bowman logo. And that's just another reference point that has is bringing in traffic. A couple spots further down the list is the Topps Living Set um, library and information source. And so I've got some data and stats about the Topps Living Set. I've got a complete photo checklist that I regularly update. And that 
even though the popularity of that set is starting to wane, it is still a popular resource and it is still a popular place that people are going um, to find out information about the living set. The things that aren't quite as popular are the regular reviews that I do. When a, a new product comes out and I write about the product, I maybe do a box break or a pack break and show some of that on there. And I, I do get a little bit of traffic from that, and there is a short-term bump. And, and because I'm able to do so many of those, it kind of helps build the portfolio or library of the site. But the popularity of those set reviews just aren't quite the same as with some of the other topics. And I think part of that is because that's the content that is covered everywhere. Beckett has those articles. Cardboard Connection has those articles. A lot of other bloggers talk about the new products that are coming out and show what those products are and have the checklists and things like that. I think there's just so much supply of information out there for those topics that they just don't concentrate the popularity quite as much as some of the other ones do. But I'm going to continue to do those because I do enjoy those. I do think it adds value to have a holistic picture of things on the site. And so I'm going to continue to do those. But it's those other more unique things, those things that are adding value, that are shortening the time that it takes for somebody to learn something or to find something that they're looking for that seem to be the most popular content. And then finally, I just thought I would give you a quick picture of the sources for the traffic that comes to the site. Where does that traffic come from? You know, I try a variety of different things. Well, a little over 50% of it comes from search and Google search results. So people searching for something on Google or Yahoo or Bing, whatever it might be, whatever search engine they're using, a little over 50% of it is coming from search. There's about 25% that is coming direct, so people that just directly type in waxpackhero.com into their browser. And then the remaining 20 to 25% is coming from referrals or think links. So other forums or other blogs that have a link back to Waxpack Hero, other podcast pages that have a link back to Waxpack Hero, any other website that has a link back to an article or the site as a whole. Again, a little over 50% from search, a little over 25% from direct, and a little under 25% from referral links from other, other websites that are out there. So I hope you enjoyed that, getting to hear a little bit more uh, of kind of the behind the scenes action of, of what is driving traffic to Waxpack Hero, what have I found to be popular sources of, of content. So I hope you enjoyed that. Reach out to me and let me know if anything surprised you or if you learned anything from that that you are going to find helpful. But before we go, I want to make sure that I also highlight um, Starstock again. They're the new trading card marketplace, and the beta version of the site actually just went live in late April. And so they want to be a faster and cheaper solution to sell cards. They're still looking for sellers to submit cards, and I did my own submission, and it was up there on the site at launch, and I actually already sold some of the Bowman Prospect cards that I sent in. I think it was within the first day of going live. I had already started to see some sales of some of those Bowman Prospect cards. Remember, they're offering a 5% sales commission at this point, and there are no submission or processing fees. You send in the cards, and they do all the work. Your cards are insured and stored in a vault, and you can have them shipped back to you at any time. You can buy, store, or flip cards at the push of a button. If you're interested in learning more, contact Mike via email at mike at starstock.com. And they're still looking for sellers who have rookie and prospect cards of current players for the three major sports. For more details, contact Mike at mike at starstock.com or go to www.starstock.com. Last but not least, I just want to ask if you enjoy the show to leave a rating or review at your favorite podcast app of choice. Uh, please share it with your friends. I'd love to continue to see the audience grow. And don't forget to check out the Hobby Hotline, the live call-in show that several of us podcasters do live every Saturday morning. You can follow at Hobby Hotline for more details. Well, that's all I've got for you today. Thanks, and I'll catch you next time.